Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to share with you a really interesting lesson I learned in my second year of university that not only transformed the way I make my notes on the iPad, but also revolutionized the way I approached presentations, writing essays, writing reports, and even these YouTube videos. And I hope it's just as helpful to you as it was to me. So in my second year of university, I was doing a biochemistry unit. And at the time, I didn't really know how to study for biochemistry because I never did biology in school. And I remember going through one of my lectures one day and our teachers used to list the learning outcomes for that lecture in like the first few slides. And I was going through the learning outcomes and I came across one that made no sense at all to me. And it basically said, explain the roles of the different enzymes found in glycolysis. And apart from the word enzyme at the time, which I had a vague understanding of, I had no idea what that question was asking. And so me, being my usual lazy self, went straight to Google and typed, what are the enzymes found in glycolysis? And the first thing that came up were these really fancy complex words, hexokinase, phosphofructokinase, and pyruvate kinase. And I was like, this is why I didn't do biology in year 12, because biology is just filled with random terminology. And when I went and searched up those bits of terminology to read up on them, I felt even more confused. So I went up to my teacher one day after a lecture and I asked him for help. And I was telling him that this learning outcome in particular was really complex, hard to grasp. And I basically wanted to know how much do I need to understand this for the exam? And the first thing he actually did was ask me, Samuel, what do you think the answer is? And at the time, me trying to be smart, I pulled up my notes and I started reading some of the things I wrote down. So I was like, hexokinase is the first enzyme found in glycolysis and it adds a phosphate to a glucose molecule. Um, and before I could go on, he interrupted me and asked, Samuel, do you even know why that fact you just said is important? And I was like, not really. And then he was like, do you even know what glycolysis is? And here I was just going through my notes, trying to find the right answer to give to him. And I think my teacher realized very quickly that I was focused on having all the right answers, but I had no true understanding of why they were important or how they were connected. And I remember him telling me how there's this tendency that all of us have to just go to university and just study information just because it's going to be in the test. And what he said was really sad about it was sometimes we get caught up in memorizing all the small details that we miss the big picture. And, and if only I was curious enough to push through and ask why and get that bigger picture, I'd realize that there's actually so much to be appreciated here. And so he sat me down, he asked me a few questions. He eventually realized that I had not done biology in school, so I was further behind than other students. And then he pulled out his whiteboard pen and he started explaining the concept of what was going on to me as though I was a beginner. And he drew an apple tree on the whiteboard. And the first question he asked me was, Samuel, what does the apple tree need to grow? And I was like, that's a pretty easy question. This is year one science. So I was like, okay, you need a bit of sunlight and warmth from the sun. Um, they need water and I believe carbon dioxide because someone told me at one point that plants are able to turn carbon dioxide into oxygen. And I was like, oh yeah, well done. Plants need these three things, sunlight, water, which is H2O because we're real scientists here, and carbon dioxide, which is CO2. And he's like, plants have the incredible ability to take these three things and transform them into two things that all humans need. And he's like, you already said one of them. And I was like, oxygen? And he was like, yes, when they make oxygen. And one more thing. And then he was like, here's a hint, what's inside the apple? And I was like, sugar? And he's like, yes. And he's like, what's the most common sugar that you know about? And interestingly, immediately after that, he started to draw the structure of a molecule that we had coincidentally learned the week earlier. And I was like, I know what that is. That's glucose. And then he was like, so what's the molecular formula of glucose? You should know this. And I was like, uh, I don't know. And he's like, okay, how many carbons are there? Uh, six carbons? You know that sugars are carbohydrates, right? And I'm like, yeah. And then he was like, do you know why a carbohydrate is called a carbohydrate? Because it's a carbon and a water. So that's a C and an H2O. 
And so the ratio of C's to H's to O's is one to two to one. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. So that means glucose's formula, according to what you just said, is C6H12O6. And it's a carbohydrate. That makes perfect sense. And then he was like, now, why do you think that's significant, Samuel? And I honestly didn't have a clue at the time, but then he told me something really interesting. He said, plants in this incredible process have the ability to take the sun's energy and capture it in a molecule of glucose. And the energy exists between the bonds of those different carbons. And he was trying to get me to see that this glucose molecule here was carrying energy that came from the sun. And I was like, okay, that's really interesting. I get it now. Glucose is carrying energy. And then he was like, what's this process called? And I kid you not, I actually got this question correct because everything started coming back to me. And I was like, this is photosynthesis. Like I learned this in year seven and eight. And then he went on to explain how the name itself, photosynthesis, is self-explanatory. Photo meaning light and synthesis means to create. And what's being created is light energy is now stored as chemical energy inside this glucose molecule. Now here's where it got really interesting. It turns out that those two things that plants produce, oxygen and glucose, those are the two things that human beings need at the cellular level, those two things to create energy for themselves. And it makes sense, right? Because the whole point of our respiratory system, our lungs and our circulatory system, so that's our heart and our veins and our arteries, is to pump oxygenated blood around our body. And the whole point of our digestive system is to break down foods such as glucose and get that to the cell. And so then we started to go into what human cells do with these two things. And he kept reminding me that you know, glucose at the end of the day is carrying energy from the sun. And what we wanna do with it inside our cells is break apart that glucose and release its energy so that we can use it. And so we talked about how in this process, human beings take these two things and they produce three things. The first thing is carbon dioxide. Then I discovered that human beings in this process also produce water, a bit of H2O. And then finally, in the process of breaking apart that glucose, we produce energy. And energy is in the form of a molecule that biology students all know about called ATP. And that's kind of like the energy that humans run on, the fuel that our cells function on. And the whole point of this process is to get that energy. And this process, I found out, was called cellular respiration. And I remember at this point, we kind of took a step back from the whiteboard and my teacher kind of gave me a bit of time to digest what I just heard. And, and then he was like, do you see it? And I was like, see what? And then he said, the, the bigger picture of what's going on here. Can you see what's actually happening? Human beings take the two things that plants produce, oxygen and glucose, and they're basically doing photosynthesis in reverse. They produce very similar things to what plants take in. And then I was like, that's technically not correct because we're producing energy in the form of ATP. Like we don't produce sunlight. And then he was like, where did that energy come from? And I'm like, the glucose molecule? And he's like, where did the energy in the glucose molecule come from? And then I was like, the sun. And then he highlighted how this beautiful process was all about trapping sunlight and glucose so we could use it. It was all about showing me that at the end of the day, at a fundamental level, we are running off the sun's energy. That the energy that gives our cells life and the life of all living things comes from the sun. That, and I remember realizing that and thinking, wow, I have heard people say that all my life that you know, the sun gives energy to all things, but I have never actually understood what that means until now. How cool is that? That the whole point of photosynthesis and cellular respiration is so that we can run off the sun's energy. And I had so many questions after that that I just kept asking my teacher and I thought, this is incredible. And then he went on to explain that, you know, this process, cellular respiration, that was all about breaking apart glucose was made up of three steps glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. 
And then he zoomed into glycolysis and he said, do you know what glycolysis is all about? And I was like, yes. Glycolysis was in that learning outcome that I was asking you about earlier. And he said, do you know what the name glycolysis means? Glyco means sugar and lysis means to break down. So glycolysis is the breaking down of sugar. And it's actually a really long process made up of multiple steps. And in order for each step to occur, we need these little enzymes, these little helpers to come along and do things to the molecule to help them along the way. And he was like, those enzymes, that's what that learning outcome is about. It's about understanding the different steps involved in breaking down that glucose molecule. And all of a sudden, at the end of this 30 minute discussion and dialogue I was having with my teacher, I felt like all these bits and pieces of terminology that I'd heard about, I'd read in my textbook that made no sense to me, all of a sudden started to come together and form a story in my mind. And although the lesson he had just given me was about biochemistry, I think the real lesson I learned that day was, you know, it's so easy to get caught up focusing on the small details um, or little specific bits of information and miss the whole point of what's going on. That the first thing you should do whenever you're learning a new concept is get the bigger picture. It's to zoom out and see why is this important? Why do I need to know this? What's going on here? And, and, and understand what's going on in terms of a story. And, and, and so once I realized that the hero of this story was glucose and its job was to carry energy from the sun into the human body and then we'd break it apart and use its energy to run ourselves, all of a sudden, there is a skeleton for me to build my understanding around. You know, I can zoom in to cellular respiration. I can zoom in to glycolysis and then make notes about what glycolysis is, but not get lost in the detail because I see how it fits into the bigger picture. And I think this is true for all subjects. You know, that idea of making a big picture story that contextualizes the details. You know, that's the fundamental principle upon which my notes are made. So when I look at this visual of photosynthesis and cellular respiration, that visual captures my understanding of that concept in a simple but effective way. And after I've made that, I now feel like I can go in depth into glycolysis and not get lost, because I see where I am in the bigger picture. But interestingly though, for anyone who's gone on to do biochemistry at a higher level, you'll realize that a lot of the things that was mentioned in that explanation that we went through earlier of cellular respiration, is actually filled with mistakes and flaws. As you learn, you've got to be open to adapting and amending that big picture story you have in your mind and not get too attached to it as you gain new information. And it's kind of that realization of, you know, as I learn more, the more I learn of what I don't know, like, which is so true. But yeah, as I said at the start, this idea of getting the big picture has made its way into all of my learning in all of my subjects. You know, like what's the point of memorizing a formula if you don't know where it came from or how to use it? Or in law, what's the point of reading through legislation if you can't see how it fits into an argument? Or even giving a presentation or teaching, why would you just throw information at people in simple dot point slides without meaningfully communicating them in a big picture story that's memorable? That's literally the basis of great communication and, and great thinking, in my opinion. The ability to synthesize a story and, and give people the big picture in the midst of the details. And it's something I'm still working on, whether it's a note I'm making, a presentation I'm giving, an essay I'm writing, or even just a YouTube video I'm making. And I hope it's something that you'll look to incorporate into your learning whenever you get the chance. That's all for today's video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. It would be you.